Hey, what's up guys? When there is a decline in the market, there is a huge opportunity. In this video, I will explain how one hedge fund manager Bill Ackman made 100x return on his investment in just 30 days. This trade started with $27 million and shortly after that it turned out into 2.6 billion bucks. Bill Ackman is an activist investor. Many of you probably do not even know who that guy is, as some of you might remember him from unsuccessfully betting against Herbalife stock as he expected stock to fall to zero. Since he believed that Herbalife was a scam and a Ponzi scheme, oh well, Herbalife indeed was a questionable business model, but Ackman was a wrong on that one. Bill Ackman started shorting Herbalife back in December 2012, when stock was trading around $20 a share. He bet a whooping $1 billion the stock would crash. However, 5 years later in 2017, he covered up his short position at $40 a share and he lost entire billion dollars. Many investors start leaving his Persian Square Capital Management Fund and questioning his skills and ability as a professional investor since he underperformed the market for a number of years. From 2011, S&P 500 outperformed Bill Ackman's fund almost every year. In 2015 and 2016, his fund generated negative returns while S&P 500 gained more than 36% during the same period of time. Well, no wonder why many investors left him. As of Q1 2020, Bill Ahmed managed over $6.5 billion in his public investment fund and also he managed few billions in his other private equity fund. However, if you look at his return for 2019 and 2020, I bet new investors will think twice before leaving him. Taking into the account his performance in 2019 and in 2020 and looking over a long period of time since 2004, Ackman was able to beat the market. He generated 15% rate of return on average comparing to 8% of the market. In 2019, he was able to generate a whooping 58% comparing to 30% of S&P 500. And in 2020, as of Q1, his portfolio was able to jump into triple digits while market is down in double digits territory. Let's take a closer look at Ackman's short position and how is this comparable to Michael Berry from The Big Short? Both Bill Ackman and Michael Berry bought far out of the money credit default swaps. You want to bet against the housing market? Yeah, we're prepared to sell you five million in credit default swaps on these mortgage bonds. Can we make it a hundred million? Absolutely, we can make it one hundred million. Is there any way to do two hundred million? Two hundred million dollars? Hell yeah, we can do 200 millions. We are Goldman Sachs. Come on, man. Barry started shorting the housing market since 2005. He was also underperforming the market in the same year. In 2006, he even lost 18% returns. Just like with Ackman's, Barry's investors were getting impatient and started withdrawing money from his fund. This is the time when he suspended all withdrawals. I currently have reason to believe the mortgage bond market is fraudulent. So, in order to protect investors from this fraudulent market, I decided to restrict investors' withdrawals until further notice. Sincerely, Dr. Michael J. Burry. His underlying premise was that mortgage default rate would increase up to 8% in 2007. After covering his short position, he made $100 million, but he also earned his investors $700 million. Bucks. He was able to purchase credit default swaps, or in short, CDS, which is basically an insurance on mortgage-backed securities or other corporate debt. During 2008 housing bubble, there were many sophisticated investors that did not really understand that credit default could happen, as housing market was stronger than ever. How many people have you talked to about this trade? A few. There's definitely some interest. Oh, my boss would have my ass. Yeah, no. Are you crazy, Jerry? Get lost, Fuck Jared. you. 
Which is why you're here talking to us, wrong number. You smell that? What is that? What? What's that smell? The cologne? No. Opportunity. No, money. Okay. We smell money. The default rates are already up from 1% to 4%, fellas. And if they rise to 8%, and they will, a lot of these triple Bs are going to zero, too. And that, you're too close, is an opportunity. Okay, you're saying that at 8%, the bonds fail, and we are already at 4%? That's right. If they go to 8 it's Armageddon. Yeah, that's right. How come nobody's talking about this? So you're offering us a chance to short this pile of blocks? How? With something called a credit default swap. It's like insurance on the bond, and if it goes bust, you can make 10 to 1, even 20 to 1 return, and it's already slowly going bust. 10 to 1, 20 to 1? No way. And no one's paying attention. Mortgage bonds are dog shit. CDOs are dog shit wrapped in cat shit. Yeah, that's right. Mortgage bonds are dog shit wrapped in cat shit. Well, yeah, that could be another analogy. With Bill Ackman, story is similar, but with much shorter time frame. While Michael Berry promised took two years of painfully waiting for his prediction to come alive, while Ackman took only one month to realize his gains. Let's take a quick look what Ackman had to say right after he placed the short bet. Hell is coming, okay? And I, I felt, you know, it's really, I've never had this experience before in my life. The closest I had was the financial crisis where I'm saying, you know, things are coming, you know, bad stuff's coming. Um, but this was a, a feeling like I've never had. Like there's a tsunami coming, right? The tsunami's coming and you feel it in the air. All right, that was Bill Ackman speaking with Scott Wapner on CNBC back on March 18th. That appearance, as you may remember, has stoked a lot of controversy after it was revealed that Ackman's Pershing Square netted a $2.6 billion gain from a bet against the equity markets. Lots of stuff that was out there. In fact, yesterday, I took a swipe at him, too, after reading a lot of the stuff that had come out in Forbes and the Wall Street Journal and the New York Post. In a letter released last night, Ackman describes what happened. Uh, I spent a lot of time on the phone with him yesterday, too. He said back at the end of February, he bought credit default swaps because he was convinced that bad things were coming. He had been watching the very carefully how it had played out in China and was convinced at that point, he said, that uh, there was going to be having some sort of an economic shutdown that would have to come in Europe and the United States to stop. He did put out a press release back on March 3rd describing what he was doing, saying that he was making this bet to try and protect a lot of the positions positions that the fund held. At that point, he said the, the bet that he had made was worth zero dollars. He put out a second release on March 9th, disclosing that it was worth a lot of money at that point, that the credit swap, default swaps had really moved up in value. Uh, then on March 12th, uh, you just heard from Mike Santoli, that was the day that the market was down about 10 percent. He said on that day, because the market sold off so much, he started unwinding that bet, taking it, taking it off. It did take him about 10 days to get out of that. In the meantime, on March 18th, he tweeted to the president to shut down the country because he was concerned about what was happening at that point. Scott Wapner called him, and he agreed to go on halftime at that point. Uh, the call was kind of a stunning call. People heard how panicked he sounded at that point. He did say in the call that he was buying stocks at that point, that he was feeling better about how things had come and said he was long on the country. He didn't finish unwinding that trade. It took him a few more days to get out of it. But by the time he spoke to Scott, he said he had already sold more than half of that position and netted a gain of about $1.3 billion. I guess in reading through it and talking to him about it a lot, what it was was not necessarily a profit on what was happening with that as much as a way of covering the positions he was long. He's long in stocks like Lowe's, Hilton's, Agilent, Berkshire. He took the profits of what he was unwinding with that and put it back into the stocks that he liked at that point, all those stocks that I just mentioned. Um, and I guess if you're really thinking about what a hedge fund is, you are covering your hedges, you're, you're hedging your bets by, he didn't sell any of his longs, but he was hedging in case there was a big sell-off that had come. And that's kind of what paid off in that position. So. Again, a lot of controversy out there. I was one of the critics yesterday, but I will say in talking to him, I understand a lot better what had happened and, and what went on with all of that. Ackman placed the bet back in February while he raised alarm how bad our economy is going to be. He even went on Twitter and suggested to president to shut down the country for the next 30 days and close the borders. For the first time ever, Ackman thought to liquidating the portfolio in its entirely because they believed it was likely the market would decline drastically. Then he changed his mind. After carefully reviewing portfolio, 
they concluded that hedging strategy was more consistent with their long-term ownership philosophy and would likely lead to a better long-term outcome than selling off their assets. To protect the portfolio against economic impact, Ackman paid $27 million for credit default swaps as a protection on a high yield index. He generated a whooping $2.6 billion in the process and he exited on March 23rd. That's almost 100x return on your investment with just one month. However, if the investment would not play out in the first month, he would still be liable to hold the contract for the next 5 years until it plays out or until he defaults. It means that every month he would pay $27 million. That is $324 million a year, or $1.6 billion within next 5 years. Ackman could have lost $1.6 billion, which is almost 20% of his entire portfolio if this trade would not play out. Luckily for him, it took only one month to close this position and cash out 100x return on his investment. From early March to March 23rd, when the rescue effort from Congress and the Federal Reserve took shape, investment-grade bonds lost 6.2%, and junk bonds were down 19.7%. Ackman bought CDS's contract at new 10-year low. He assumed that credit spread will increase while junk bond will default. Credit default swaps increased from 50 to 150%, which is 3x and it was enough to cash out the gains. It was a risky bet but congratulations to Bill Ackman on his successful trade. Without a doubt, this is going to be one of the best trades in the history of finance. Let me know what do you guys think about Bill Ackman and his 100x return trade. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't.